Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game with another one. If you haven't got cab mounts, I'm going to show you how to make a set from scratch with basic tools. Stick around. So here's the body mount on the passenger side. You can see the way it's shaped. Problem I got, I got needle one over here. There was absolutely nothing there. So what I got to do is I got to make one of these. So I'm gonna sit down now and I'll show you how I made all this mount and the sections I can do with it. Now you look at this mount and like a lot of fellows would ask about how would you go about it? Well, I'm looking at this now and I see this here, which rolls up here, so that's one piece. This here, going around the side, that's two pieces. And then this here in the middle, that will be three pieces. And I join it right on through here. Look. This is where I join this here and come down around here. I'll probably play with this here a bit more, see if I can do a nice job on it. This here, I don't even know if I'm going to put it in it yet. I don't know. I might just cut it straight off and leave it flat. I'm not quite sure. But uh, I'm going to turn around now. And what I got over here, I got a piece of plate. I have an abundance of this. This is 14 gauge steel, it's a lot heavier, so it's going to be a little bit harder to work and bend, but it doesn't really matter because the bend is a really, I don't want a full 90 on it, it's got to have a nice roll bend on it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to measure up a piece uh, again. I'm going to go ahead now and make a piece wider, make it a little bit longer, and then cut the piece out, put this bend in it and then start figuring it out. Okay, I cut out this piece here as a bit longer and a bit wider, the whole nine yards. Um, I went ahead and I got it marked here. This is still too long and this is too long. So this is about in the middle. So when, if it rolls here, if it rolls this side or this side of the roll, I'll still have lots of material on it. It's always tricky trying to get that roll. Now, this is how I'm going to roll it. I'm going to lay that there like that to roll that. First thing I'm do is raise this up. Sometimes this can be tricky. All I'm doing is just eyeballing this. When I get it sort of falls in the same place. I have it. I'll bring it down in it. There you go, I got a clamp in place. You can see it's a lot bigger. Uh, measured down up here on the other side so you get a rough idea of where it goes. Now I got this piece uh, made. It's a little bit bigger and everything. I'm not going to do trim it up or nothing yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to make this piece here. I'm going to cut out a strip that's this wide here and I'm going to measure this measurement here and I'm going to make this section here first. I'm not going to do nothing with it. I'm not going to trim none of this up. All the outside edge of this is going to be done after the fact all out here so i'll leave it all long for clamping on stuff like that i'm just going to start building the piece inside here when it gets it built inside here like it could be off center a small bit and i can still trim it up because i got lots of excess on the outside so i'm going to go ahead now and cut a strip like this here and trim it up seams are tape. real thing for this push it out around there I think I'll be roughly done. I'd say 10 inches. Now I went ahead and I got the strip cut out. I marked the center of it right here. And then I marked in the flat sides on each side. So the panel comes in and then it starts to roll here to go to the middle. So I'm going to go ahead down and see if I can uh, fold this up half sensible here now. Yeah. 
It's not a fully round front end, see? Not a complete oval. Here's the piece I got bent up. The first try, you can see it's a little bit longer on one end. But uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. Got pretty well got the shape of I shortens the side up a bit and uh, starts fitting it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this piece here to fit this because all I'm going to do is I'm flip it over to the other side because this is symmetrical here. There's a bit of a tweak on it here, different than the other side, but I can roughly get it roughed in by uh, using this piece here. So I'll go and go ahead and I'm going to trim this up here and trim this up here and get this fitting nice around this here. Now your problem you got is if you notice one side's longer than the other. The easiest way I've ever found to uh, even them up is just take it and draw it on something. Like so. Because it's supposed to be symmetrical. And you can do this to, uh, to fix it. And all you do then is you mark the bottom here on this side. And all you do then is you flip it over. Line it back up again. All I'll do then is I'll just mark this here and I'll cut that little bit off. So I went and cleaned all the scale off because this metal got a scale on it. You can see it in there uh, where it was going to be welded. And I was uh, looking at this and sizing it up. And the more I sized it up, I think I should. I was going to put two of these together and finish it off, but I think it's going to be a lot harder to work this top section first. I think if I made this in a separate piece and had it all made up, and then weld it onto that last, so it's just a bead all the way around the top of it like that there. That would be a lot easier. So what I'm going to do next now is I'm going to figure out the top panel and cut out another piece now to fit that, that I can flow it to the shape of it. So I'll mark that out, I'll use this here, I'll just lay down a piece of steel like that now, because this is the shape it's got to be, and I'll cut it out. So I got the piece all trimmed up and I got to check to make sure that it fit the uh, the bracket. There's the bracket here. I got it so that it fits downside that there right nice. Passes down through it. Now the tricky part is this piece here. This is a round circle and then this here rolls away from it. Now here's what I come up with. An idea. Let's see if it works. This is an old 9 inch housing. That I got hit in there is pretty heavy. All I'm going to do is I'm going to weld that, tack weld that on the top of that there, and then I'm going to use this like a dolly, and I'm going to beat this down around the outer edge of this here, and roll that edge right over top of that. Hopefully it'll work. So I'm going to weld it on there now, and see what happens. Now I just got it welded on this side here, because I won't be able to get at this if I beat this down in the right way. Uh, so it works out all right. So all I'm going to do now is put a big hammer. Down some air in protection, because I'm going to be bound on this. And just start working my way around, taking my time to fold that down, see what happens. it looks like I'll beat down it's got a little bit of a wallop in it this way but I can probably hammer that out but I was more after this curve here 
I'll show you what I was after because this here rolls up on the back side. I left this a little bit long back here and this is where the mount is to. So I'm going to cut that off there now and uh, have a look at it. This is what you're left with. You can see it's got a little bit of a roll on it and it's got a bit of a turn on it this way here. I'm going to hammer that out this way now across here and I'm going to play around with it and fit it in place. I dallied it up, played around with it, and, got, and played around with the fitment and whatnot, so I was happy with it. And then all I went and did then is I measured up from over here. I measured from this face here down to this face here and found out it was a half an inch in this distance here. So then I just come over here then, and I know that this here would be the top of the plate, because this is where this would sit like so. And from here down to the bottom was a half an inch. So that's all I did. I didn't trim nothing up yet, I cut nothing up. What I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna weld all the inside of this, have all that done, and then what I'll do is I'll come out here and I'll trim all this bottom section off of this here. And if you look, you see it's actually still a little bit long, so I gotta cut that off across there. And then I'll weld all this up here and grind all this out here and make this all one piece and dress it before I even go to the point of welding it on this. I'll make all this one piece first. Here it is, all grinded up. As you can see, I'll take something and I'll finish it right off because it'll be too hard to work with when later on I can clamp that in the voice and turn it around, everything, clamp everything around it. But now that'll just sit here, like so. Like that. I had to cut the end off it here, and then I had to bevel it out so it fit in there nice. Like so. That'll sit there and I like that now, and I'll weld that right around there. And up along and across there and well that permanently that not worried about down here i got to drill a hole right through the center of this and down to the bottom then the bottom got to be cut out of it uh down here this will have to be cut out but i want to have a nice round hole on it because i want to use this to put a dimple in the floor because this is heavier gauge steel and when i hammer into it it'll come down to meet the hole in the mount here so first thing i'm going to do is position that now and weld that on there there it is fully welded on I'm going to grind dress that up now, make it look pretty. Lots of heat in it, as you can see. So I got that all welded up, all the way around there, and I got it all grinded up, all dressed up. Now the next thing I got to put in it, the last thing I got to put in it, is this dimple, okay? Now this, this tapers off and goes right down here, so what I'm going to do to, to accommodate that is I'm going to cut that in through here so this can relief out here and I'll re-weld it again in here. But uh, I'm going to bring this over to voice now and set this up. I'm going to pound that crease into that. Right there. All I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up the width that I need it. That looks pretty good there. Put that in the center. Like so. Pairs of voice grips. Clamp that onto the voice. Oh, I'm going to lay that in the center right now, but I'm going to clamp it on that. That way I'll be hands free. And it won't bounce around with me. there I'm 
looks about right. This is all I did. You can see it used the voice as one angle and then that piece of steel as the other one and I just pounded it down into it. I cut that relief in it there so this could fall out. And one thing you'll notice on this here is this is going to draw in on the top on these two pieces here on the top side. So like if you had to cut all these sides off first you would run into an issue that this side here would be too short. So do the relief first. I got it flipped over. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and weld all this section here now. Well, all the solid and grind dress that up there, and then all I have to do then is drill two holes here before it does that. I'm gonna cut it all off. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld that up there now. Here it is all welded up. Uh, I should show you this, this is pretty neat. I found this the other day. It prints as auto, okay? You can see it's like a clear lens, but I got the uh, tintable lens in it. And uh, this is the one here. It's the helmet here. I saw it there and it caught my eye because of the, the clear lens on the side of it. Uh, this thing is only like $39. It's the cheapest helmet I've ever come across. Now this is slow um, coming back on. It's quick to turn off, like in terms of the to when you're welding, it'll uh, it'll go black on you very fast. But after you finishes your weld, it'll stay black for you know a, a second of that longer than a normal like a really good helmet. Really good helmet is almost instantaneous. But what I like about that is if you're doing spot welds, you can use that delay to help slow you down. So you can actually see your next process and the delay will actually keep it uh, keep you in, t in check because every time it turns off you're wanting to weld again you're going to warp up metal so I thought it was pretty good for $40. It's a nice cheap little helmet. Right? And you know it's nice when you got it on I find you still got lots of light around you so you can see things that are going on around you but that was my find of the week so I figured I'd just share that with you. We got that at Prince's Auto. Let's see, what's the name of it? Auto Darkening Welding Shield. Got that all grinded up there and I went ahead and I started uh, cutting this out so it uh, looks like the factory one. As you can see here, the way that steps up, the way that steps up there. And then I went ahead and I took some measurements off the sides here and off the sides here to measure it off and I marked it out where uh, I'm going to cut it off. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to chop all that off and clean all that up there now. Here it is, all trimmed up. All I have to do now is I'm going to put the uh, spot weld holes in it. And I got to drill a hole for the mount. And I got to drill a little decorative hole up here that has no particular reason why it's there. And I got to cut the back out of it. But as you can see, it's, a, it's pretty close to a factory style mount. And you can make these here any style, shape you want. Um, all I did is, like I said, I kept it like one, two, three pieces, and I just made individuals as I was going. And you know, you can be pretty creative. If you want to build custom mounts, you can build something similar to it too. But you know, start off with the flat plane because if you're trying to build a box and then put tabs off the sides of it, it becomes hard to try to get everything flat. Where this is a flat bottom in it, all the way around, uh, it'll always sit flat, and you just add to it. Now you can come in here now and you can cut the center out of this here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill a hole right down from the center and mark it and then just cut a round circle on it because the factory one, let's see if I can show you here now, the factory one has a dimple in it, see? And I'm going to put that dimple in it as well. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drill spot wells in around here. I'm going to uh, drill this hole right here and uh, like it's on the factory one there just to make it look like it and then i'm going to position this over here where it's going to go i'll position that place now i have this point here okay and up here on the top i have this mount and i have this mount over here so between the three of them mounts i should be able to I should be able to do a diagonal here, diagonal here, and a measurement here.
to know where to get the measurement and I'll use it off of this side here I'll measure this one here and this diagonal here and I'll just repeat it over here to find the point over here where this has got to go because that should be a square box all the mounts should be right so I'm gonna go ahead now and drill up the few holes line that up there and mark the hole and drill the hole in it and clamp that in place well, all I'm going to do is this mount is solid. I'm going to take that there and measure this measurement here. I'm going to take this here and measure this distance here. To the center of the hole, which is 58 and a half inches. So I got a 1-8 hole drilled through this, through the back of this, and into the floor of the car. So that holds that place. You go in here and you can see the mount, where it goes. See the screwdriver hole? That's where the mount will go. Uh, I'm using this small screwdriver to line it up. And after I put that there, all it is, I took my measurements from up here again, down to this, and on my X measurements, so that when uh, you stand back here again, the measurement from here to here and the measure from here to here is the same and the distance from here to here and the here from here is the same so that there is in the same location on this side as that side there now so what I'm going to go ahead and do now I'm going to because um, I'm going to have to make these holes bigger I'm going to put drill two holes in this put two clinkos in it and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drill all the rest of the holes around it uh, for plug wells I'm going to make this hole bigger I'm going to open up the back side and open up the one on the floor. I got two clicos in them there now. Uh, if you haven't got them, you can use screws, but these are great to have. Uh, they're very easy to get. You can get them on eBay, and they're not that expensive, right? Uh, as you can see now, I can take the uh, hole and I can put it right on through. So that's all lined up there now. So now I can go over out now, and I can drill this hole bigger and cut the back out of it and set all the plug welds up. Just I marked these two here. Because when I start drilling other holes in this here, I don't want to go drilling one of them holes out and make a mistake because they are my alignment holes. I'll weld them up after, but they are to stay 1 8. So I'll go ahead now and get everything uh, drilled on that now. So the first thing I got to do is I got to flip this over here. As you can see, I got the hole marked. And I got to cut a center out of this here. Now I went to going through my drunk pile and finding things that was the same diameter. And I found this piece here. That would be the same diameter as that inlay there. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use this here. Lay over the top of this here and center it up. And then I'm going to cut that much, all that out of that there. So then I can have a spot for when I bolt it down and hauls the bolt tight, it'll draw down right here. Because the floor got to be drawn down to, into this mount. Now I had the hole marked. Uh, I made it a little bit bigger here. This is the outside marker here. This is the inside of the hole because the diameter I needed was this one here outside. And I could only mark it in here when I laid it on top of this here, like so. So all I did now is just guesstimate it on the inside of it. Measure the outside of it. Now, how am I going to cut this hole here? Now, it'd be nice if you had a nice big hole saw. Go out and buy specialty tools and whatever and get a big hole punch or something put in there, but no, I haven't got it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a large chunk, take the grinder, and the zip blade, and I'm just going to cut a section out of it like that, and then I'm just going to start working the outer edges of it with the grinder. Like I, like I said, it does a lot of stuff with basic tools. It'd be nice to have a real nice hole saw for this. It'll come out really nice. Uh, well, it's going to come out nice anyway. It's just that uh, the hole saw will make it a lot easier. I haven't got no hole saws. Sorry. So I'm going to do this with the grinder. All I did, cut out a square hole. Now I'll cut this in across here and down here, in along here and down here. And I'll just work my way to the outside and I'll get it close to the line and then I'll just take the grinder and the die grinder and just grind it out. Here you have it. Round hole. Not bad for freehand, is it? All it is, I use the grinder. Grinder fits in there. Very nice. That just finishes it off. Right? Grind it off there. I had smaller stones here to do it with. Smaller stone here, see? That fits in there. I just took my time. Used the die grinder on it. 
You get so much of it done, then I just eyeball it. That's not half bad. That's good enough for that. Now, I got that spot marked there and that spot marked there because that's where uh, the click goes go. So I went ahead and I drilled one of the holes for the other holes, not for the spot wells. I'm going to drill them out and that section will be done. And then I'm going to come back here and do the same thing, drill a few spot wells up here and that'll be done. Went ahead, got everything uh, cleaned up, painted up, painted this up, put multiple coats on it, painted it inside, drowned the paint in there, let it dry. So it's been a few hours now. So now I'm going to mount this in place and I'm going to mark all my spot welds and I'm going to uh, grind off the spots where it's going to be welded. Now I got it all bolted in place and I got all the spots where the spot welds are too. I got them all uh, grinded off and ready to go. I'm going to clamp this on here now and you can see I got the nut going through with a washer on the inside. Everybody should clamp down. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to weld all this on first because I don't want to go to warp each other on this. When I weld this all on here, everything's going to pull from in the center here. So then I'll do, i got a large washer put on this here so I don't do too much damage to the, uh, the mount. It shouldn't do nothing with it anyway. And I'll just weld all this on here first. So I'll get that welded on there now and then we'll uh, pull down the dimple die. There it is, all welded in, everything dressed up, just like factory. You look at that one there. All made with simple tools, a couple of bit of flat steel, and just some thought process. Uh, you saw me pulling the bolt down through. It was a bit more trickier than I thought it was. I ended up having to uh, hammer form it with a ball peen hammer, and you can see the round circle that I cut in the bottom of the mount, so there's lots of strength there. And then I, then I weld it from the outside here. I still got to get inside and dress everything up when I put the cab down. But now the floor pan is flush to that there like the way it was. And all I've done with that is all I use is uh, nuts and bolts and a few washers. I had two of these on the outside last going off because it was actually bending the washer on the outside. So I had two of them like that. And then these were on the inside on the floor. Three of them stacked up on top of each other. And then a nut screwed on that and I just tightened it up. That's all I did to get that. But that's pretty well it for this one. So that's how you can make uh, a body mount. Uh, you can follow the same process for doing all sorts of body mounts. But like I was saying before, most people will try to make the outer section and just put tabs off for the mount. And having a hard time with it. If you start off with this flat section here. And then have that fit and flat against the vehicle where you want to put it to. And then build everything off of that and then cut whatever you don't want out from behind. It'll be a lot nicer finish because trying to build this box here and then making this tab to weld onto the outside of it. This will end up being all over the place and it won't be a real nice fit. So that way you know that it's flat and parallel here and it's flat and parallel right through the whole system when you make the mount. See? You can see I got the hole put in there. Factory hole and the dimple like the other one. Get this one over here, see? The hole in the dimple. And I trimmed it back the same way that one's done. See? 
So unless you're really looking closely at it, it'd be hard to tell the difference from that side to that side. So, anyway, hope the tips were good, and until next time.